Hey guys, and welcome to your new video. Today is the day. Today I got myself the Mage Blood Heavy Belt. Dude, it took me around about seven days of like, I don't know, what was it, 12 hours, 13, 14 hours of grinding uh, in the start with my Stonebrain character. I can go the entire content doing Saurus carries and whatnot, then switching over to the Magic Finder, farming tower maps and so on. But after a week of like intense grinding and I actually had to take a day off today uh, just because I was still like, Ugh. it was too much, okay? But I did it. I got myself the Mage Belt Heavy Belt and today we're gonna find out how does it work? What does it do? Why is it so freaking expensive? Is it overrated? Is it better than Headhunter? And all these kind of things. So um, I bought this belt today for around about 200 exalts, which is like one and a half mirrors or something. I don't know uh, what the current mirror price is. But yeah, thanks to my good negotiation skills, I would say, because the actual listing price was, I think, 220x or something. But hey, I played Expedition League, you know, I am, Tuyen is a friend of mine, he teached me the way of haggling, no, actually, Tuyen is an asshole, just saying, but anyways, I did it, it was exhausting, but here we are, so, the Mage Belt Heavy Belt, what does it do, leftmost four Magic Utility Flasks, constantly apply the Flask effect to you, Magic Utility Flask effects cannot be removed, so what does that basically mean is, as soon as you equip a Utility Flask, which is like a just like any any flask that is like not live mono hybrid flask um, will basically apply the buff to me. As you see, I have now the Quicksilver flask buff and increased movement speed. And this basically works. I cannot use this flask anymore. It has full stacks, whatever, and it cannot gain any charges in that case, right? But I can say like, yo, I want to have a silver flask for like permanent onslaught. And now we have onslaught. And then we can use like, I don't know, a diamond flask gives us like permanent critical strike chance and what else is on there, evasion rating. We can use a jade flask, for example, to get the jade flask buff and extra evasion rating, right? So I'm sitting here completely naked and uh, naked already running 7.3 thousand armor. So now you might say, uh, well, MBX, where's the problem? You can just like use your flasks and you pretty much have the same effect just that they have a duration but hey you kill monsters you get flask effects right and then you just basically reapply your flask like why would you spend one and a half mirrors to have like a permanent flask like what what is the thing about it right and the reason for that is basically the stuff that you can do with like enkindling orbs empowering your flasks okay for example i prepared a couple of flasks i'm not done crafting them yet but i'm on it so I got like here a bunch of very beautiful flasks that all have the enkindling orb on it for the increased um, effect, right? So you basically get this with like spamming these, uh, where is it, enkindling orbs. And they basically can have increased effect but gain no charges during effect. So this is actually quite bad because... Oh, I actually want to keep that flask. This is actually quite bad because as soon as you basically use that flask, as long as it's then active... Um, you cannot gain any charges, but therefore it has an enormous amount of increased effect. So what that basically means, if you have, for example, um, let me see here, a Quicksilver Flask, this would be kind of the perfect flask that you want to run for a speed, which is the Enkindling Orb, so it has 70% increased effect, then the um, Tier 3 Alchemist's Modifier for reduced duration but increased effect, and then the Cheetah, the new T1 movement speed during flask effect. That basically means your flasks only last like 5.8 seconds compared to the other flask is like 6 seconds without quality. So you, you reduce the effect duration of your flasks, but therefore you get a, a very, very hyper speed up flask as you see. This flask alone gets me uh, from, let me see here, the buffs here, basically 161. So basically this flask alone from 11% movement speed to 161. So this flask gives me 150% movement speed. But the problem is, if you do it this way, if you um, do this with enkindling orbs, you gain no charges during its effect. So you basically use the flask, once the buff wears off, then you can get charges back to, at some point, reactivate them, right? Unless you use the Mage Blood Belt, which doesn't care about that, because the Mage Blood Belt says um, Magic Utility Flask cannot be removed and they apply their effect constantly. So I cannot use it but it is permanently up. So now this enkindling orb with like 95% increased effect on this flask alone is permanently up. 
And now you probably understand what is actually the thing about that, right? And you can make this with every kind of like flask. I have here like a sapphire flask, right? Gives me cold resistance. How much cold resistance does it give me? Uh, we are looking at 35 and now we are basically on... Why does it... What? Eh? Yeah. My belt is buggy. What? Ah. Oh, wait. I'm stupid. Jeez. Okay. It says on the belt, magic utility flask, okay? So this is now a white utility. So they made, make it magic, okay? Now it does work. Now it's a buff, okay? Oh, God. I was like, yo, my belt is, is, is gone. Like, it's, it's stupid. So, basically, I'm getting from 35 to cold rest capped. Just by equipping a flask. Isn't that insane? It's like... And my PoE crashed. Yo, my... P oh, God, fix your game. PoE, please. Yo, I'm actually doing... What is this? Physical code conversion transcendence. Yo, this is... Yo, this is uh, secret information. Nobody has seen it, okay? Nobody has seen anything about transcendence here. Um, <laughs> so, good. Do we get another attempt? Yeah. Perfect. So, that flask alone makes me rest kept. So, what if we actually have something like a bismuth flask, which is the flask for 35 all resistance, increased effect, the enkindling orb, and we craft all res. So, this flask alone... Yo, I'm rest kept. Yo, see? Dude, equip a flask, you're rest kept. Get 150% movement speed, for example, and you're good to go, right? So, where does this come even more handy? And this is probably going to be the next project. And this works with, like, every single um, utility flask is out there. You can take insane amounts of less damage taken from fire, um, like, ruby flask, then the sapphire flask, then, like, all rest cap with this one. You can have permanent phasing on slot, right? You can get, um, basically, with all the flask effect coming from a pathfinder, for example, you can get, like, three, four hundred percent increased critical strike chance out of your diamond flask that is permanently active, right? But there is one thing that I'm interested in the most, and this is this combination over here. Um, basically, if I'm just saying, okay, Mage Blood Belt on, I'm gonna use now an um, eva a Jade Flask with T1 Evasion Rating, which is basically the best, so 95% effect plus the Evasion Rating, plus some effect modifiers on the tree, um, for example here, 10% increased effect, that basically... I'm having a naked character, there is no jewels, no whatsoever, right? So just by standing here in hideout, I'm gonna get around about 14,000 evasion rating. And if I do the same with like, for example, the granite flask, which is the basically the armor flask, I'm getting nine and a half thousand armor out of that, right? So, and if we would technically say, yo, let's, let's play this with iron reflexes, so we convert all our invasion rating into armor, we're now sitting at 26,000 armor. And then we say, yo, what about a basalt flask gives us another 20% um, more armor, and we're looking at 38,000 armor, which is basically almost 90% fist damage mitigation without any gear on. And this is permanent. With my Quicksilver Flask, we're super fast as well. And I think this is the build that I personally might actually go or consider doing as my first Mage Belt project, which is an armor stacker, replica Dream Feathers, the way that I build it back in, I think it was High Sleek. I mean, obviously, my High Sleek character, right? right? Wild Strike... PoE, MBX, something like that. So here is the Transcendence Wild Strike character that I've played in like, uh, what is it, 312 Heist League, right? It's an Aura Stacker um, with armor stacking, basically replica Dream Feathers, and this was one of the coolest builds I've ever played. I mean, obviously not gonna work out because this build cost me, I think, like 3,000 Exalts or something, right? And I currently have, after buying the belt, maybe like 20, a couple things to convert, maybe 30, 40 exalts that I couldn't actually invest in the entire character. So yeah, I'm basically having a two mirror character that probably cannot even run Blood Aqueducts. But we're gonna find out how does this work, um, using determination, using grace, all of that kind of good stuff. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how the journey will go in the next uh, upcoming days. Is it actually worth it? Is it actually possible still to play Armor Stacker or is it completely off the table? So, let's talk, so now you know basically what the Mage Belt belt does. So, let's talk about why is it so expensive? Why is this belt, uh, let me actually check how much does it go for right now. We have the Mage Blood belt. Um, 1,500, this is a pretty cheap dude, buy this one. So, currently at 234 exalts, let me see what the mirrors are kinder. Ex 
salt to the mirror conversion over here. Looking at 150. Yeah, so basically pretty much one and a half mirrors for the belt right now. Why is it so expensive? Why is it so much more expensive than the Headhunter? I personally think it's the first time we have the Mage Pot belt. I think it's the number one chase unique at the moment. There is always like demand versus supply and at the moment like everybody wants to have a mage pot belt and they are like very very rare they are i think they are same rarity as the headhunter so why is there more headhunters on the market than mage pot belts obviously headhunter does have divination cards while mage blood does have not a direct one i think you can still get it through like uh, any like unique belt or something that might work but you know headhunter doctor cards nurse cards you can farm a headhunter but you cannot really farm a mage belt belt and for it being exactly or the same rarity and it's new and it you can maybe do like insane stuff i'm just thinking about armor stacking but there might be i don't know how many other variations that maybe somebody gets an idea or are we gonna find it out uh, in the next couple days if we have like another solution to like the most insane build of this league um, that pretty much explains the rarity, the price, and because everybody want to have it, then the price goes up, 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 until everybody has a mage blood, or the people say, like, you know what, it's going to get too expensive. So, at some point, I would assume, maybe in a week or two, when the prices are more settled up, I think this will stop at, like, around about two mirrors, is my expectation. We're gonna see about that. So, let's talk about mage blood versus headhunter what is better what would you use i think the best way is using a mage blood and just skin transfer the headhunter out uh, on it because you know if you have balls to the floor why not now jokes aside i think it just depends on what content you farm for bossing obviously there is nothing better than a mage blood belt at the moment i would say with the things that you can get out of it if it comes to 100% delirious farming, let's assume you would farm um, like 100% delirious over here with beyond and anything like that, nothing can beat a headhunter. No freaking chance, okay? When it comes to like delving, where you like get buffs and lose buffs, for example, I think Mage Blood Belt will come out ahead as well as maybe Simulacrums. I know a lot of people that say Headhunter is the best in Simulacrum, but I think once you're done with the wave and you're looting, you're always starting every single wave with zero buffs. And the problem with Headhunter, you need to find or you need to get the right buffs to get going, while this be uh, belt is basically having everything permanent active, even in hideout. So if I just equip here my stuff with a movement speed with uh, all the rest, dude, I'm rest capped, I have a movement speed, it's permanently active, there is no buff that I need to steal or have to steal that my character gets going, basically, right? So I think it's completely situational, where you would use a headhunter, where would you use um, the mage blood belt, but at the end of the day, I'm really happy that GGG decided to bring more of these chase uniques. For example, the next one, the Ulnetal's um, amulet, right? This amulet basically makes your belt a 7 link. This is like super rare item and goes for like 88 exalts right now, right? Then we have like the squire unique, the next like chase unique, the shield that makes your one hand weapon um, and um, gives them additional three sockets. You can use this with like, I don't know, like a Mjolnir making it a 6 link Mjolnir belt, uh, the Cosprey's Malice, you can use the hidden blade, you can use a poet's pen 6 link or whatever you want to, right? And these items are just so high in demand that i really like that ggg gives us more and more of these chase uniques something where you really say you know what i want to have this item i'm gonna grind my ass off i want to get this item i want to be the special snowflake making the fanciest character and maybe at some day i'm gonna play mage blood squire hidden blade something i don't know fancy you know it gives us more options to do and the build variety this league with all the masteries and whatnot we can have you know, I'm really enjoying this league. I'm really happy. Now, basically, for me, was it, the, uh, was it worth the buy? I'm not so sure. Because in the end, I grind up like one and a half or two mirrors now in the in the matter of a week. Now I spend everything on a belt. And basically, now I have like 30, 40 X to play around to make a new character. Well, I could just sell the belt again and make a character for like 300 X. So I buy a, uh, a headhunter for 100 X and, and spend 200 X in my character instead, right? So there is a lot of ways that you can see it. I basically, for me, it's now a new reset, basically. My, my currency is gone. I got my, uh, my, my belt, which I farmed for. And now we're going to try, figure out the coolest way to use it. And maybe at some point I will decide if it's worth it or not, and maybe I sell it again or whatnot. But I think it's a it's a great belt with all the fl permanent flask and the options. Just think about um, stat stacking. Stat stacking always had massive troubles getting rest cap because 
um, your suffixes, intelligence, percentage intelligence, percent attributes, like everything is like double suffix that you want to have, right? But you always have a very hard time getting rest capped because there is no harvest anymore, right? So an easy solution is, uh, easy solution is a bismuth flask with all rest. I'm a rest capped. I don't have to worry about any resistance on my entire gear. Or if I say, yo, I'm, I need a little bit more tanky character, but I do have a good rest, go with an amethyst flask. An amethyst flask with a 70% increased effect. Let me quickly make this magic. So basically, this um, flask alone gives me now 78% chaos resistance, right? I mean, there is... Now I need like one or two items that have chaos resistance and I can use, uh, technically use divine flesh on any, uh, every single life build, which makes it a lot more tanky, you know? Like the options are kind of not endless, but we have a lot of things to play now with and I'm so looking forward um, to get this belt to a test. I just hope that my character will not suck ass because I don't have the currency uh, to build a, a good belt getting assisted by the mage, but because this belt alone will do nothing, right? Good. My plan for the next days is basically make a build around it and I personally look in towards either deep delving or um, or at least like getting to delve 1000 or doing like 60 simulacrums wave 30. So this is the actual plan. I want to make a build that is capable of doing um, the wave 30 and if so, then we're probably going to make a farming project out of that. But hey, everything in the future, I think, right? Boys and girls, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.